Kia ora team, it's your boy Max from the Black Jersey, here from Eden Park. I am staying here for the evening, and this is the new season preview for the Blues, ahead of the 2022 Super Rugby season. It's going to be an awesome season for the Blues. The um, audio for this video, yeah, probably not going to be the best, I don't have my audio set up. But this is an awesome background to have in a YouTube video, so I'm going to make the most of it. Here in the Garden of Eden, the Blues are going to try and defend their Super Rugby Trans-Tasman title, which they won in 2021. This 2022 season is going to be absolutely fantastic, so make sure to go to the new website that I've started for the Black Jersey team. It's going to be great. So the Blues in 2022 have quite a few changes, so I'm going to go through those in this season preview then I'll of course predict the starting 15 I think will take the field so it's our prop we're having Jordan Lay come in his injury cover for his brother James James Lay is likely to miss the whole Super Rugby season this year so his brother Jordan coming in from Auckland to provide that cover over at the hookers we've got quite a few guys leaving Ray Nuia and Luteru Tolai are both off to Moana Pacifica and Lenny Apisai is off to Auckland um, he was only in as a short term cover so that's kind of it for him with the Blues Babs. Ricky Riccatelli's coming in from the Hurricanes. I think Ricky Riccatelli's going to be an amazing addition to the Blues and I think he's really coming in to revive his career. He got a bit stuck at the Hurricanes at 27 years old. It's definitely time for a change. Over in the locks there's a few levers as well. Jacob Pierce and Patrick Tuipilotu are both off to Japan. Patrick Tuipilotu has a one year deal with Toyota Verblitz and uh, Jacob Pierce. It's very gutting to see him leave at such a young age. Gerard Kelly Tuiotti, a third lock going to Japan as well. Kaldi Tuiotti is heading there after a very long and serviced career with the Blues. All the best to him with Japan. In as the replacements, Luke Romano. Yes, Luke Romano is coming in from the Crusaders. After 10 years with the Crusaders, Romano is not getting re-signed and so he's coming here to Auckland to play on this ground behind me. Goodness me, Cameron Suafua is coming in from North Harbour for his rookie Super Rugby season. Then we're getting James Tucker back to New Zealand from the Brumbies. I'm very curious as to how James Tucker is going to go after a very good season for Waikato. In the flankers, a bit of sad news there. Dylan Hunt has indeed retired at only 26 years old. It's a real shame to see Dylan Hunt go, and um, happy birthday for his 27th, I guess. Blake Gibson's off to the Hurricanes as well. I think he's going to do fantastically there, but we're not here to talk about the Hurricanes. We're here to talk about Anton Segner, rather, the German-born flanker coming in as the new player. Whereas Adrian Choate has got a full season deal this time around at open side. Meaning Dalton Papali will be far ahead at 7. I'm very excited though to see how Signa goes at Super Rugby after the rapid improvements he's made through the MPC. We then have the halfbacks. Jonathan Ruru asked for early release from his contract to go to Provence in France. Whereas um, Taufa Funaki is coming in as a halfback. Very excited to see how he goes because I don't know too much about Taufa Funaki. Very young, exciting player that I'm going to keep my eyes on. At the 10, Oteti Black off to Japan to the Shining Arcs. Real sad one there. Whereas Bowden Barrett is coming back from Tokyo, Sun Goliath. So very exciting for Bodhi to come back to Eden Park and show his stuff to the Blues fans. We then have the centres. A few chopping and changing over there. So TJ Fayani is the millionth Blues player off to Japan. TJ Fayani um, in the middle of his, his career rather perhaps. Um, yeah, probably a wise move. He wasn't going to be an All Black. But thank you to him for his long service to the Blues. We then have Corey Evans from Auckland coming in. I think Corey Evans could have a massive impact for the Blues if he gets enough game time. I spotted him playing under 20s. I think he's indeed 
very good. We then have Tamati Tua, who debuted for the Blues back in 2018 as injury cover, getting his first full contract. Very interesting to see what the six foot five stepper is going to do for the Blues. Whereas Roger Tuivasa-Shek is going to play rugby union for the first time in 10 years because of his code switch from the New Zealand Warriors in the NRL, the rugby league competition Australia has. Um, I do think Tuivasa-Shek, as I've speculated many a time, is going to plug the hole at 12 a quote that I've often mentioned. I've said to him, I'm very curious to see how he's gonna go. Lucky for me, he replied. That's not really the point of the video though. Um, the point of the video is to keep talking about the Blues and Johnny Makalai Tori, who was a member of the squad last year, did not play due to injury and now he's being released from the contracts to go back home to Northland. Really disappointing for him. Um, I really feel for the guy after his bad luck with injury. Whereas Imoni Narawa has gone off to the Chiefs and all the best to Imoni Narawa. No changes for the outside backs though. Bryce Heem has signed a long term deal. Whereas Zahn Sullivan is here to stay and Caleb Clark has come back from sevens. I'm going to speculate a possible starting 15 for the team that will take this field as well. Um, I think Carl Tuinukawafi and Nepo Laulala will continue to start. Look, it's just logical for the Blues to start a combo with similar height to each other at prop. Because the thing is, with prop, you've got to have two guys who are really going to balance the scrum with each other and work in tandem. And then obviously you can use Alex Hodgman and Offutu Ngafasi on for the second 40. I do think as well, Ricky Riccatelli is going to start as the hooker for the Blues. Um, yeah, the hooking depth of the Blues, not the greatest. So there's going to be an opening for Riccatelli. Kurt Eklund's had a bit of injury troubles, whereas Soani Vakina is still 21, still a wee bit of improving for him to do perhaps. We then have um, the locks. I think Tom Robinson, um, he's got a bit of a motor just like what you might have heard in the background, again sorry for the audio quality. But yes, I do think Tom Robinson will start at lock at number 4 for the Blues this year in 2022. Look, he's the logical choice to take over as captain. Whereas, Locke is kind of an area of weakness for the team. So I think we're going to see Tom Robinson in the number 4 jersey for the Blues this year in 2022. Sam Derry, I believe, will be in number 5 to complement him. Sam Derry's got a very exciting future ahead of him. I can't wait to see how Sam Derry goes this season. I then think they're just going to try and get their best forwards on the field. Akira Iwani at 6, Dalton Papali at 7, and Hoskins at 2 at 8 is obviously the logical loose forward combo. Don't you dare suggest another loose forward combo to me, otherwise this is the best one for the Blues. I then think we're going to see Finlay Christie at 9 again. He had a wonderful 2021, finally getting his first All Black cap as a 25 year old. Bowden Barrett's obviously going to return to 10. Um, I think because of Steven Pettifetta's versatility, although he won the Dwayne Monkley medal for 2021, we're going to see him come off the bench a fair bit to provide cover. Caleb Clark, he's going to slot straight back into the 11 jersey and I think he'll absolutely get a recall for the All Blacks. Roger Suivasashek, as I predicted, will plug the hole at 12 and I think Rico Ioane in that game against France in the end of 2021 really proved that he could do the job as a centre. Um, one of my hot takes for the 2022 season is that AJ Lamb could replace Mark Talia on the right wing. Talia plays better on the left wing and I think with AJ Lamb the thing is he's got a bit more agility than Talia whereas he still retains the power and the catching skills under the high ball. I do think as Peter Feta will be seen off the bench a fair bit, Zahn Sullivan will be in the 15 jersey for the Blues for 2022 and I also think Zahn Sullivan's not too far away from an all black cap. I don't think his brother Balin's too far away either. So yes, this is my season preview for the Blues for 2022. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the Black Jersey has got its own website now. Please visit the description to catch the website. Also, come to Eden Park sometime soon to see the Blues play. Their season's going to be massive in 2022. I can't wait to see them go. Right guys, remember to like this video, comment on it, hit the notification bell after you subscribe, and of course, I will talk to you later after you visit me on Instagram and so on. Thank you so much guys and welcome to the 2022 season.